Uh, thank you so much, Joe. I am so, so blessed. I, I, I was so expectant of this uh, Sunday and uh, I just wanna say Happy New Year to all of you. It is such a blessing. We uh, can feel the fresh air of 2021. And I, I am so grateful. I can, I mean, I'm so expectant for this year, um, you know, what the Lord is going to do in our midst. We are going to experience growth. We are going to experience an abundance of an outpouring of the spirit of our lives. There are things that we have never seen before in the history of our, of our congregation that we're going to experience this, this year. And I don't know how many of you uh, feel it. I, if you, you know, if you can agree with me, we can trust God for it. Uh, get ready because there are some, uh, some of us who have never stood on a pulpit to preach. And a time is coming when you're going to stand on that pulpit just where I am here and give us the word of the Lord. Amen. The spirit of God is at work and I can't just wait to see what he is going to do uh, this year. In fact, I was just reading, a, I felt a, a scripture come and, uh, into my spirit right now from the book of Psalm 24. And the Bible says, lift up your heads, all you gates, be lifted up you ancient doors that the king of glory may come in. Praise the Lord. If we can prepare ourselves, the Lord is, is ready, willing, and able to come and lift us up and take us to the next level. Praise be to God. Uh, I am excited that this is the uh, first Sunday of the year, and we are going to be blessed. I want to welcome every one of you, uh, and I believe that you had a great, great, uh, you're still having actually a great uh, year, a new year experience, and um, and we are going to be blessed. I thank you, uh, 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 Joe, for uh, really emphasizing about prayer. Uh, we are going to join the Church of the Highlands, and I believe Pastor Kate is going to be, uh, you know, just guiding us on prayer, uh, so that even when we go, there's a session, you know, in the Prayer of the Highlands whereby they let you lose for about 20 minutes, and you're praying as an individual and everybody is on their own praying. And so uh, we'll be able to get some guidance on what to pray when that time comes. And so when we are praying, uh, we'll be praying for those issues uh, uh, per given day. And throughout the day, just commit yourself uh, to, to be calling upon the name of the Lord. I mean, I was telling God this morning when I woke up uh, early in the morning, the Lord, I want this year to be special. I want to see things that I've never seen. And uh, we can be excited because we are going to do this together. Praise the Lord. We shall nudge each other. No one is going to be left behind. When you, you forget, we shall be reminding you. And uh, I hope you don't feel like we are too much on your phone because we shall be bringing those messages to just remind us uh, of the love and uh, of, of our expectation. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. I want to bring this message uh, th th this morning, uh, the message that I called the bold and courageous believer of 2021. The bold and the courageous believer of 2021. Uh, as I bring this message, I also want to uh, cast over the vision of the things that we are, uh, the four things that I want us to focus on as a church in 2021. I hope you have a pen and a, and a, and a Bible, uh, I mean a pen and a notebook, so that you can note down uh, those things that as we go along, uh, so that you can uh, find out. And, and I also want to welcome those of us who are watching us on YouTube. This can also be the four things, the four pillars of 2021 that you can hold up and they can, uh, uh, they can hold you up in the presence of the Lord the bold and the courageous believer of 2021. Now, when 2020 uh, was coming to a close, I just saw the, the enthusiasm, you know, in the hearts of the world. Everybody was just ready to let the year 2020 go. And I had, you know, uh, commentaries, you know, from, uh, from the news media, from the social media. Some people branded the year as cruel, painful, and full of, uh, the, you know, the deaths and the pandemic, social unrest and civil, civil things that happened. Uh, I, mean, I mean, when you think about 2020, you know, as a human being and you, you'd, you'd, have, you'd just wish it away. But I would like to think about that a little bit uh, in, a, in a minute. And um, so that we can uh, evaluate and see 
uh, whether what happened in 2020 was fair enough to all of us or to the church in particular. Uh, before I go there, there's a scripture that we shared in the New Year's Eve uh, service. And for those who uh, you know, uh, were not able to attend, it was from the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter number eight, verse number 12. And so the Bible says, do not call conspiracy everything these people calls a conspiracy. Do not fear what they fear and do not dread it. Praise be to God. And, and I thought that was a very, very powerful scripture because uh, while the world, and we all know the things that happened in 2020, it was almost uh, like uh, uh, things that happened that, that threatened the, the very life in us. And we wished it away. We hoped that we would never face uh, such tragedy. We would, we, we prayed and called upon the name of the Lord and rightly so, that the Lord would break the back of COVID-19. But there are some times that things happen in the world and God allows them to happen so that they can awaken us up and uh, to reevaluate our relationship with God. There's one thing that we can give a testimony that throughout this pandemic of the pandemic of, the, of 2020, that the Lord was able to protect us. Amen. The Lord was able to provide for us. And even though there are so many people whose lives passed on, and people experience a lot of tragedy. Blessed is the man and a woman who was founded in the, uh, in the, in the, in the courts of the Lord. I've, I'm reminded right now of the scripture that says that the righteous prosper in the courts of the Lord, praise be to God. And, and, and while we were worshiping, I was thinking about, you know, the plagues that befell the children of Israel, you know, a long time ago. And, uh, you know, when Moses went before Pharaoh and, uh, and as we all know, he was hardening the heart of, of Pharaoh. And, and like back to back, if you read the book of Genesis, I mean, the book of you know, Exodus, uh, the, where, where God is preparing Pharaoh to release the children of Israel. And when he is hardening his heart, there is a back to back plagues, you know, like the water turning into blood. There are frogs and locusts that would come. And, and I was thinking for a moment, think for a moment, what was was the children, what the children of Israel in their camp were thinking about all these plagues. And they, because they could hear all the calamities and uh, the pain being inflicted uh, to, to, you know, to the nation of Egypt. But the Bible says that while all these calamities were happening, it never entered into the camp of the Israelites. And even though they heard about the conspiracies and uh, I mean about the pain and about the tragedy that had befell, Egypt, it never knocked on their door. Praise be to God. Because they were God's chosen people. And let me tell you, we don't know, as, as uh, we were sharing uh, in the New Year's Eve, we don't even know what 2021 is going gonna, is gonna to bring. Probably there's going to be even a great uh, a tragedy that's going to happen. You know, uh, God forbid that there's going to be a, great, a greater tragedy than COVID-19. But what happens when tragedy strikes? Are we going to be swayed by, by what the world speaks about, you know, uh, tragedies and pain? No, 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 no. We are not going to do that. And uh, uh, this uh, book, the, the, the verse in, in the book of Isaiah uh, clearly says that we are not going to call conspiracy as they call it conspiracy. We are not going to fear and we are not going to dread anything that comes into the world. Why? Because we know that our Redeemer liveth. And that those who are found in the courts of the Lord, they will be protected. The Lord is our refuge, praise be to God. And he will protect us. And the time is coming where there's going to be so many things that are happening into the world. And, um, you know, uh, blessed is that man who knows that even though those things will come, that our, that our safety and our our, our lives will be hidden in God. Praise be to God. The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter, uh, chapter number 2, verse number 9, that, but you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You are a, a peculiar, a peculiar people. You know what is peculiar? It is something, it is somebody who is unusual. It is somebody who has been set up for a special purpose. So you are God's own special 
person, praise the Lord, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Beloved, I want you to know that you are one of the chosen people. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. If calamity comes into the world today, it is not going to touch you. Why? Because we are founded uh, in, the, uh, in the Lord. And you know what? I am looking forward to hear testimonies of how God prospered, you know, believers. Even in the midst of a pandemic, because that's exactly what we do, you know, just to confound uh, the wisdom of the wise people. And sometimes the, the world is going to look at us and wonder, why are these people rejoicing while there's a lot of calamity? Why, why are they coming together and lifting up the name of their God? Even in the midst of pain, in the midst of trials, you know, and uh, this, is, is, this is because we are peculiar people. Praise be to God. You are a, a peculiar person. Praise be to God. Now, as we, as, we, as we think about the believer who is going to be bold and courageous in 2021, there are a few things that we have to think about. Number one, we have to think about the perfection of God's power in our lives. Amen. So there's God, God is omnipotent. We all know that there is no power that is greater than his power. But how do we arrive at the perfection of God's power? Because I believe if we are going to be bold and, 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 and courageous believers in 2021, we have to experience or we have to come to a place where the power of God is at its perfection. Praise be to God. Now, we are going to check out uh, uh, what the scripture says about uh, experiencing uh, the perfection of God's power. And this is found in the book of 2 Corinthians, uh, chapter number 12, and verse number 7b to uh, verse number 10. And I know we are very familiar with this scripture. This is what the Bible says. I'm reading from verse number 7b. Therefore, in order to keep me, this is Paul uh, speaking to the, to the Corinthian church. And he's saying this, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, you know, conceited, that word conceited means excessively proud of oneself. Amen. So he says, therefore, in order to keep me from uh, becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh. Amen. A messenger of Satan to torment me. Verse number eight, three times. I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Praise the Lord. Amen. Therefore, Paul says, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness. Amen. So that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake, Paul says, I delight in weaknesses, in, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Profoundly put there. And, and you know what? That script, the, that portion of scripture goes against what is the general understanding of experiencing God's perfect power. power. You know, but Paul recognized but in order for him to experience the perfection of his power, he had to expose his weaknesses. This, there was going to be tragedy. There was going to be pain. There was going to be persecution in his life. Now, when you read about the letters, that the, the, the episodes that Paul wrote, most of the episodes, you know, talk about when he was in a prison. He was in a dungeon. He was arrested. He was beaten up. He was sometimes almost drowning in the sea, beaten by a snake. And you wonder, well, do I really want to uh, go through that in order for me to experience, uh, you know, God's perfect power in our lives? Well, beloved, that is how sometimes how God's perfect power is going to be exuded. You know, Christ himself also sets a very great example by going to the cross. And think about this. You know, the other day uh, I was uh, in, in, uh, in one of the forums that I am, you know, you know, one of the minister, you know, pastors forum we have in DFW here in Dallas. Um, I had a, one of the pastors who um, 
uh, who was speaking some, some great, great exposition about what was Christ did. And he was talking about how Christ Jesus, being God, came and uh, emptied himself, you know, to take the nature of a human being. And, 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 and I've, I've never seen it in that way because the way he has expounded it is, you know, it's like thinking about God in his own um, ex exorbitant power and uh, in his own, in a class of his own. And he comes down on our level, you know, and he empties himself of the nature of God, you know, of his omnipresence. Think about this. He empties himself of, of the of the authority that that he has to command legions and legions of angels to come and and crush whatever part of the universe that he would want. He empties himself of all that authority, and he is clothed in a human form. And not only that, but he lives here like we do, and he goes ahead and becomes. He takes on sin that we were, and he goes to the cross. He dies just like any human being. And he, on the third day, he is resurrected. And, and I was looking at that and I said, what manner of God's perfect power is displayed in that? I mean, by him just lowering himself and emptying himself of his godliness and assuming being incarnated as a human, a human form and therefore displaying the power of God on the cross of Calvary. And I realized that this, at that point, that it is through his suffering it is through his emptying himself of his godliness that, that the display of God's power is seen. Praise be to God. And, and we are able to come level to his, to, 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 to his understanding of who we are. And we are able to appreciate of his, uh, the, the perfection of his power. And so I understand now how, why Paul is, 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 saying, is, is saying this that I delight in my weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, hallelujah, then I am strong. Beloved, in 2021, we wanna experience uh, the perfection of God's power. And there are gonna be difficult times, but remember the verse that we began with, that when they talk about conspiracy, when they talk about things that are happening, we are not going to say that those are conspiracies as they are saying. And we are not going to be fearful. Why? Because we know that we have a God in heaven. Amen. Whose eyes are set upon the, the, the believers, the, his righteous people in whom you're one of them. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And so after experiencing that divine power, what, is, what does his divine power do? Amen. Now, this is going to be the theme, the scripture theme of our year. And that's how I felt the spirit of God telling me. This is found in the book of, of 2 Peter, verse number 1 to 3. Amen. Now, if you can just grab and, 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 and think about this verse that you're just about to read, it is going to be a blessing for you in 2021. 2 Peter, uh, verse number 1. I mean, uh, uh, 1... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you what. Okay, Sister Lorraine, please find it out for me. His divine power has granted us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. Praise be to God. For his divine power has given us everything required for life. Think about that. What is it that we require for life? We need to support our families. We need money. We need, we need uh, life. We need, we need to live long here on this planet that we can see the goodness of God and do the works of the Lord. In this life, we need to serve God. In this life, we need to be connected with our friends. In this life, I mean, think about what we need in life. And he says that the moment we experience the perfection of God's power, Hallelujah. Then that power will be able to give us everything that is required for this life and godliness. Praise be to God. Through the knowledge of him who called us his own, uh, uh, to his own glory and excellence. Beloved, if you can allow that revelation to settle in your heart 
and it can propel you to greatness. Amen. Knowing that you are experiencing divine power 24 seven, that even as you get into your car in the morning, going to work, that his divine power surrounds you. Praise be to God. As you sleep in your bed every night of 2021, that his divine power surrounds you. Praise God. As you teach your children, as you come to church, as you go about everything that you do in 2021, that his divine power will surround you. Amen. And that power will be the source of everything that you require in this life and unto godliness. Praise be to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? The third thing that I thought that the bold, uh, the, the bold and the courageous believer uh, requires in 2021 is to know what God's will is regarding your life, your family, and, you are, and the church and, and everything that you do in 2021. I mean, I want to I wanna do, I want to know that every acti activity that I'm engaged in is this the Lord's will? There's nothing that is so powerf uh, uh, powerful as, we, as, as you knowing that beyond any shadow of doubt, that any engagement that you are, you're gonna be engaged in in 2021, that it is in God's perfect will. Praise be to God. And so how are we gonna know what God's will is regarding our lives? This is a scripture, is in a scripture that we all know. Okay, it is found in the book of Romans, chapter number 12, verse number two. Amen. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version. I thought that was clearly explaining it well. And so this is what the Bible says. Do not be conformed, conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God. Amen. What is good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Praise God. Amen. So again, we are coming back to the, to the basics, you know, on where we started. We started by saying the fact that, you know, the world says, oh, these things are going to be bad. Yes, they can be bad in the world, but I know I'm in the world, but I'm not of the world. And so I'm like the children of Israel who, when Pharaoh hardened his heart, you know, there was a lot of plagues that, you know, befell the nation of Egypt. But as long as I am concerned, I have faith in God that the hardship and the experience that the world will experience is not going to be my portion. I know I may, the Lord may allow certain things to go, you know, to, to, to go in my life. But I know that I may walk, I may, I may get into a river. The river is not going to drown me. It is not going to sweep me away. I know the Lord may allow a situation like for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego for me to get into a fire so that I may not bow to, the, to, to, uh, to, uh, uh, to King Nebuchadnezzar. See, that is what is talking about here, the testing. It is testing what you know. Praise be God. But testing what your faith in God. Amen. So it says here, do not be, allow yourself to be conformed to what this world thinks about you. You're not, we are not going to be defined in 20, 2021 by, the, by what the politicians say about America. Praise be to God. We are not going to be defined by, by social media. Praise be to God. If you're in your Facebook and people have be, you know, uh, be, uh, unfriended you, do not feel so, you know, like uh, there's sometimes when somebody un unfriends you and you feel like, oh God, this is the end of the world. Amen. You are not defined by those friends that you, you meet in, in, you know, you know, on, on social media. You're not going to be defined by the things that you see in the world. You know, the fact that there's going to be trouble and the economy is going to be falling, it is not going to affect you. As a child of God, you, if, you, if we stand firm, we are not going to be defined, amen, by what the world says. Praise be to God. And the Bible tells us, it is, says this so beautifully, puts it up there and says, but we shall be transformed by the renewing of our mind, knowing what, what the promises of God. What does the word of God says regarding us in 2021? Amen. Praise be to God. It is constant and, and, and intentional um, uh, connection with the word of God. Let me, let me tell you this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So uh, the more we, we hear the word of God, 
the more we are in tune with the word of God in 2021, it will somehow begin. It is not going to be an event. You may not even sense it. You may not even feel it. But the more you, the more we, we get on the word of God and allow the scriptures to, to come and change us and, and show us who we are, praise, praise be to God, the more our minds are going to be, be renewed. And man, let me tell you, it's going to come to a point whereby you hear a negative or, uh, you know, uh, some breaking news, you know, from a, 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 such, a, a certain uh, social media outlet or a, a news media outlet. And your mind is going to say, you know what, they can say all they want. But as for me, this is what I believe, praise the God. And that is how what happens when our minds are renewed. There are so many things that are going to test us, you know, in, in 2021. But we need to pray for the, for the Lord to give us the designing spirit, amen, so that we may know and understand what, 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 what the will of God is regarding our lives and what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of the Lord. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Now, I think that is very, very crucial. And uh, I just wanted to uh, bring four things. Uh, that I believe are so, and if they're in tune with what I just shared there, uh, that, are, that are clearly um, very, very essential in 2021. If we can do just these four things as a church, you know, um, I believe God is going to bless us. I want us, I want us to uh, 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 write them down. And uh, these are the four things that are, as a church, we want to we wanna be thinking about. This, are, this is number one. We want to cultivate a relationship with God, amen? We want us to uh, cultivate a relationship with God, each one of us in the church and people who are going to join us. I want them, to, everybody to know, or we want to know that in our church in 2021, in this first Sunday, we made a decision that we're gonna cultivate a relationship with God. You know, I was, when I was thinking about this, I, I couldn't help but think about the story that we all know the story of Mary and Martha. You remember when Jesus, uh, Jesus, you know, goes to visit Mary and Martha, they, you know, they were their friends. And so when he comes into their house, you already know the story, what happened, you know, they, they come and, and, and Martha welcomes, you know, Jesus. And I believe he showed him a place to sit. But, they, but then she, she goes into the kitchen to prepare a cup of tea and maybe, a, you know, a loaf of bread or something. While Mary came and sat, you know, at the feet of Jesus, you know, uh, because she desired to hear every, every word that would come from the master. She fell at the feet of Jesus, you know, and at the feet of Jesus, you know, she would receive the impartation from the Lord. And she knew that it's kind of by, by, by revelation and some things, how things sometimes work. I don't know how she knew, but Jesus didn't have a long time here on earth. And so she recognized that I am in the in contact with the Savior, and I need to make maximum maximum use of the time that He has given us. Because, as you all know, Jesus was busy; he was visiting one city to another, you know, doing the work of, of the Lord. And this was a great, great privilege, you know, having the Savior of the entire world visiting them. And so Mary, she just falls on the feet of Jesus, and and Jesus and and, and, and Martha, while she was not doing something that was wrong. She was preparing a cup of tea just to welcome, like all of us would do. But she comes complaining to Jesus and saying, hey, Jesus, uh, Lord, Lord, you know, don't you care that my sister's not even helping me? And, uh, and Jesus, Jesus speaks to Martha and, and she talks to her and tells her, Martha, you're worried about so many things. You're worried about so many things. And I want us just for a moment, just think about that. But in 2020, we may have been worried about so many things. We are worried about how our bills are going to be paid. And, 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 and we are worried how, whether we are going to die maybe through COVID. We are worried about, I mean, think about the things that you worried in, in 2020. And in 2021, there, there are going to be opportunities that present themselves that would cause us to worry. And Jesus speaks to Martha and says, you're worried about so many things, but only one thing is required. And the thing that is required is what your sister Mary has done, you know, falling onto my feet. Because the moment we recognize that that's the most important thing, that Jesus is the source of everything that we ever need, 
I will be going to the Lord every single moment of my life in 2021, telling Lord, God, Lord, you have the answer. You have the solution. I don't want to take on a project that is going to take me years just because I'm facing or I am doing that project by my own strength. But if I can seek God and ask him, Lord, you, have you not said that you will teach me and you will instruct me the way I ought to go? If I can just spend 10 minutes with Jesus to help me in, in, in navigating in a certain project, then I will cut down on so much time that I would spend otherwise if I would go there by my strength. Are you, are you seeing what I'm trying to say? And so, and so, and so Jesus tells, tells Martha, do not be well worried about so many things. We are so, so, so much worried about so many other things that we are not supposed to be worried about. And he says, only this one thing, falling on the feet of Jesus is required. And Mary has chosen the right thing. I pray that we will choose the right thing, falling on the feet of Jesus in 2021. Praise be to God. That no matter what happens in your family, it could be maybe a thing that you've, you, you've gone through. It could be maybe a financial issue. It could be maybe, maybe, maybe a relationship issue. It could be maybe a kid's discipline issue. It could be maybe a financial issue. If we can go to God and tell him, Lord, I am coming to you because I have no answers. This is exactly what I want to do. But I want you to teach me and instruct me the way I want to go. I'm telling you. The moment you delight in the Lord, he is going to delight in you and he's going to guide you and he's going to cut a lot of time. You know, there's one thing that I know that those who delight in the Lord, he gives them what, I, what, what I've, I had another preacher say, acceleration anointing so that it will, it will take a, quite a short time what it would have taken you years to accomplish just because the Lord is guiding you. Kind of like a GPS telling you, make a left make a right oh you know and when when you know the lady of the gps when when you when you miss the direction what what, the, what does the lady say the lady doesn't come and rebuke you you fool did you not hear what i told you you know the lady of the gps says oh oh recalculating you know even though you have gone wrong but i know where you're going but i can make you go you know, to where i intended you to go or the the address that you you fed me with from the point where you are. Don't you think that is God is so good that even when we miss the direction, God is gonna, gonna come with you. You, Joe, I told you to, to take right now, you took your left. You know, what kind of a son are you? God is not gonna say that, but God is gonna say, son, 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 please, son, son, are you listening to me? And let me tell you, if you continue running 100 miles an hour in the wrong direction, God is going to cause something that is going to cause you to stop. Amen? Because he doesn't want to, you to go where you are, you are going. He knows that where you're going, there's danger. Where you're going, you're missing your direction. And you say, stop. Listen to me. And you say, recalculating. And you tell you, go back to where I told you to make a left. Go there. And very soon you're going to get there. Praise be to God. Amen? He is willing when we cultivate a relationship with God, this is exactly what we are going to experience. Church, listen. We always make time for things that are important. Amen. I am speaking heart to heart to us. We make, we make room for, uh, for our kids' games. We make sure that our children are doing their homework. We make sure that if we are men, for example, we are providing for our homes. We make sure that we go to work on time, right? so that we can provide for our families. We can get the money, we can pay the bills. If you don't pay for your rent, you're gonna be kicked out. And guess what? It's cold right now, it's winter. So you make, you make, you know, you have to be present and available for things that are important, amen? So cultivating a relationship with God ought to top the list of the things that we wanna do in 2021. And don't let the devil speak to you that this is not important because he knows that the moment you get you delight in the Lord God, the creator of the whole universe. You know, the GPS of the entire universe. Can you imagine how God directs the affairs of the 9 billion people here on the planet and he cares for them and he wants them to succeed? Amen. He also has his GPS on, in, in his heart for you. And he is willing and he says, child, if only you can just you know, abandon every other route, your knowledge, your wisdom, the things that you think you know, you know, 
and abandon those things and come to me. I will teach you and instruct you the way to go. So we all, if we always make time for what is important, we can make this part of the things that are very important in our lives. Now, number three, if we are going to cultivate an, you know, a relationship with God, church, listen to me, we have to be intentional. Let me tell you, man, there are so many things that compete with, you know, for our attention, you know, there's work, there's family, there's, uh, I mean, entertainment, and there are so many things that we want to do. Maybe families back in Kenya or abroad, you know, we have to be intentional. And in order for us to be intentional, we have to make a plan. Amen. And that plan, when you make that plan, you can say, you know what, I'll be waking up. You might like, I'll tell you, can I confess my sins? In my house, we are very, very different. Kate, my wife, is, is an early riser, okay? And I'm, sometimes, I, I think naturally, I'm, I'm, I'm the one who stays in the, in, late in the night and I want to do my things late in the night. But when she wakes up to pray and I'm left in bed, man, let me tell you the agony that I am, especially as the leader of my home. I feel like now my wife, I can hear her praying maybe in her closet and I'm sleeping. As I don't feel like I want to wake up. You know, but sometimes I say, no, 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 you cannot do this. This, you, this. The roles have been reversed and this is not right. So I say, I'm going to wake up and, and, I'm, and I go in and I make sure that I wash my face with, with cold water just to wake up because I'm feeling so sleepy. And let me tell you, I come to my office. This is my closet and I kneel down. And let me tell you, the first five minutes is really a struggle. I say, God, and I'm and I'm trying to focus and I'm trying to focus and I feel like maybe I would have gone to bed to sleep a little bit. But let me tell you what happens. The more I continue praying, I realize I'm getting a breakthrough. And I and it's like the Holy Spirit brings me, you know, maybe the lives of people, you know, the, you know, like the church, you know, like families, I feel like God is bringing people and I begin to pray for them. And immediately I, I feel I get a breakthrough. So we have to have a plan. For, for some of us, it could be in the morning. Set a time in the morning before you go to work. If you can start by 15 minutes. Make sure you pray, pray for your family. Pray for your uh, for your relative for your for, for your for, for the church. Pray for your relatives, and also read scripture. You know what I do is I have this you know like Bible gate, gateway. They have a one year plan. Like now we have just started. You know the year. They have reading plans. You can download that app, a Bible gateway, and it has reading plans. You know, one year Bible. It gives you like a scripture where you can read, and after you read it, then tomorrow they have also selected some scriptures from the Old Testament and the New Testament, read it. Now have a note, have a notebook and a pen and write down what the spirit of God writes for you, tells you. Note it down, it may not be much. You, you can say maybe the Lord spoke to me, this is what I felt the spirit of God spoke to me in this, write it down, tomorrow do the same, the other day do the same. Man, let me tell you, before you know it, you'll be, whenever you feel like you're missing it, you, you feel like you missed something, amen? So we have to be intentional. We have to make a plan. Number three, this is very, very important. Okay, we are talking about cultivating a relationship with God. Limit distractions. Let me tell you, I think we spoke about this in 2020. You know, we talked about distractions. Let me tell you, man, if there is anything the devil uses, and, and, and I'm not spared either. I'm telling you, I could be going, and, and now, you know, we were talking with my wife the other day, and I was saying, I think I need to, be going to my bible because the moment i get on my phone to to read the scripture i realize oh there's a message that has come maybe a notification and you know what happens you go to that notification there's a notification in that notification that leads you to another thing and in that thing there's another thing oh before you find yourself you're in facebook you're checking on the likes that you know <laughs> it happens I'm telling you the truth. It has happened to me so many times until I said, God, in fact, I was praying this morning. I was telling God, God, Lord, I laid my hands on my, hands on my head. I was telling God, I want to focus. I want to focus. I want to focus. You know? So we have to be intentional. Limit distraction. If the phone distracts you, get a copy of the Bible. I have one here. You know, get a copy. You know, sometimes get a copy of the Bible. You know, use the Bible. I see my wife uses the Bible. She doesn't use the phone, you know? And I think that's one of the reasons uh, she uses a copy of the Bible. If that, you are, a dist you are the one like me who is sometimes gets distracted, maybe use the Bible, but get focused. Now, talking about cultivation a relationship with God, we have to 
think about prayer. Now, prayer is, is not hard. It's just a conversation. I was telling my kids the other day when we were, we were praying together, that prayer is just like having a friend seated on there and you're conversing with him, you know? It's not difficult. It is having, it's imagining in your mind, in your heart. The Lord is not maybe physically there, I mean, physically there, but he is there spiritually. You know, you can feel his presence. So it's conversing with him, you know, like I would wake up and tell him, hey, God, thank you. Thank you, dad, for giving me, you know, giving me another day. I realize there are many people, but, you know, for some reason they are not there. And so I start a conversation and I tell him, hey, dad, uh, today I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the other. Oh, and I want to pray for uh, Joe's family. Lord, I pray for his children as they go to school. They are not going to encounter any, any accidents or anything. Give them focus. And let me tell you, you get a one family, you get, let me, you will realize that you are talking to God and having a conversation. And before you know it, sometimes I've, I've been in prayer and I realize, oh, one hour is already gone. And I, and there's a, like a list of things that I, I feel I want to pray. You know, if you are the kind of, maybe you don't know how to pray, you can make a list of the people you want to pray today for. Pray, start with your family, pray, start with yourself. Start with maybe your marriage, pray for your spouse, pray for your kids, if, you know, pray for your immediate family, pray for the church, pray for the body of Christ, pray for the nation. You realize God, the spirit of God will guide you even as you pray. So prayer is not, nothing more than talking, having a conversation with God. Number, number two, in that sense, you also have to listen, okay? A conversation is not where we just talk, talk, talk. You know, there, there are sometimes, you know, sometimes I go out, pray, pray, pray. Oh, Lord, and, I, and I'm shouting, and I'm, oh, Lord, and, I, and you know, in Jesus' name, and I walk away. No, no, no. We are not supposed to. So God, so God is like, hey, man, you just left and I, you didn't even, <laughs> can you imagine being in a conversation and you're talking and you're the one talking and talking and talking, and then you just woke up and left the other guy hanging out, you know, there and just wondering, Honey, did I say anything wrong? So you got to be still and allow the Lord to speak to you as well, okay? The Lord speaks to you through your spirit and you can hear his comforting words that I, I'll be able to do this. I'll be, if you're quiet just in about five minutes, just focusing your mind to God, you'll be amazed how you feel the spirit of God speaking, speaking to your spirit, amen? So there has to be a time to listen. Number three, I talked about this, so I'm not going to dwell on it. Study the scripture. I already told you what to do. We can study the scripture. Number three, the reason why we study scripture, and this is very important. Now, in this Bible, and you have seen, for those of you who have been coming to Bible study, we, like now we are reading the book of Jonah. When you read the story of Jonah, it is, it is such an interesting story, you know, of how, you know, he, he, he was sent by God to go proclaim the good news to the people of Nineveh. And, and he refused. And so, you know, we see the consequences of what Jonah did because of disobedience. So when we study the scriptures, the stories that we read in the Bible, this Bible has the stories of men and women of God, of how of their obedience, their disobedience. And so when we read about like a story, like what I just told you, and you're able to apply it in your life. So the next time God is going to tell you to speak something, you're able now to know the consequences of disobedience. And that is how the beauty of reading scripture. This scripture, the, the Bible also has promises that we can claim, you know? We can say, Lord, you have said that you'll give me, uh, you empower me with wealth. You can claim those promises and, and, and confess them on a daily basis. You know, the Bible has a proclamations you can make too in the name of Jesus and they'll be available to you. It talks about, you know, the, like the healing. You know, healing is the bread for, for his children. You can proclaim that if you, one of your ch ch children are sick. So, but, but if we disconnect ourselves with this, then we are not going to know the scripture, the promises. We are not going to uh, access those stories in the Bible, the characters of the Bible, and the consequences of, of the things that they did, or, or, or the effect of obeying, obeying God like David, how he obeyed the Lord. And he was able to confront like a guy like, uh, you know, that, that giant, what is his name? Uh, Go Goliath. You know, you read a, a story like that. And then, I mean, after you read that kind, of, that kind of a story, you can face any giant, praise the Lord. So that's the beauty of reading scripture. So it will teach us how to obey him and it will teach us, you know, to follow him, praise the Lord. The other thing, and the second to last here, is we when we are seeking and cultivating a relationship with God, it is good to always have an attitude of giving thanks. Let me tell you, 
there's nothing that the Lord delights as a person when he realizes of what God has been in their lives, comes back and give him, gives him thanks. Amen. There are times in my prayer time, you know, uh, like the other day we were just holding hands with, with Catherine. And we're just, we say, I said, we, are, we don't want to ask the Lord for anything, but we just want to come and praise him and just thank him for the things that he has done. You can spend just five minutes telling God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I appreciate you for the life that you've given me. I appreciate you, Lord, even for the opportunity for you that you've given me to be in the greatest nation on earth. I realize there are billions and billions of people who would have desire to come here. But Lord, it's not because I did anything, Lord, special to you, but you just allowed me. And I thank you for what you have done. Amen. So when God sees your attitude of giving thanks, oh, you know, it's just like, you know, God is like our daddy. Imagine that you did something to your kid and this kid came, oh, dad, you know, comes and hugs you. Maybe he's, you know, he is not your size and he's hugging your feet and say, oh, dad, yeah, thank you for buying me, you know, the cookies. What do you feel like doing? You feel like going to Walmart again and buying another packet, right? For that kid who is always thankful to you. You know, you feel like you want to do favors for your kid who is always thankful. Amen. Lastly, and, and this is not the list, the, the list might be long. We have to be mindful of his presence, that every single moment of our lives, we are in his presence. You know, you know, our lives as believers, yeah? We, it's not like, we, we, and sometimes we feel like, let us invite his presence right now. No, his presence is always with us, amen? In fact, when we come to church, we come to celebrate his presence generally over, over our lives throughout the week, amen? So your presence is right there. His presence is right there where you ask Brother Joel. He's right there in your home. He's right when you go to bed. When you go to work, his presence never leaves you. Amen? So we should not um, think that his presence only comes in a service. No, his presence is consistently around you. Amen? Praise be to God. When you realize that, so you, you have to be in awe that even as I walk in my place of work, I'm mindful of his presence. I cannot say, I cannot utter a, a dirty word, you know, when I'm with my friends. Why? Because the presence of God is here with me. I cannot do something that, that, that makes him, you know, that, I, 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 you know, grieves him. Why? Because his presence is right here with me. Amen. So let us be mindful about his, his, uh, his presence. So the plan that we have for this year, we shall continue to pray in our meetings. We shall continue to teach the word of God. We shall continue to, to meet, you know, in, the, in our groups, the ladies meet fellowship, the men are going to meet, uh, continue meeting and studying the word of God together. We shall, the Sunday school, we shall continue to teach our children. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank every person that has participated in the Sunday school. You know, the, I was reading a, an article from Sister Lorraine yesterday of how she was so blessed by, by, the, by the commentary of one of the kids. And, and, I, and I felt, Lord, thank you. For giving us this opportunity to teach our children the word of God. Amen. So when you're a leader, if God gives you the position to lead the women, just make sure that you meet because in doing so, we are cultivating a relationship with God, even through that group. When God, you know, lifts you up like George and Irene to call a meeting for the men and the young adults, never give up. Even if it's that one person that you're meeting the needs, God is glorified through that person and through your work. Amen. And I want to thank you all, especially the, the Sunday school teachers and, and the leaders of our groups for the work that you have done. You've never given up. Amen. So let us continue. And finally, we are going, and I, I'm urging you this because this is now personal to you. Uh, uh, we have to create a, a family altar whereby before we go to bed, we can come together. You know, even if your husband is not there, uh, make a time maybe when he's on break, you know, the earliest break before you all go to bed. Let, let you have like a five minute session whereby you can pray together as a family and the Lord is going to bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, our time is, is really going fast, but let me also uh, accelerate my time. Now, that is about cultivating the relationship with God. Now, the other thing we want to focus on is the building of the house of the Lord. Now, the building of the house of the Lord and, and Brother Joe mentioned this to us. Um, I'd like, first of all, to um, uh, maybe read a, a, some scriptures here. Um, 
so that you know the significance of, of what the building of, you know, building the house of the Lord. We may not really be able or be in a position to, to, to I mean, I'm not limiting God. A guy can walk today right now into my house or in our church, write me a million of, I, I sometimes I have dreams of this, you know, daydreaming, that is. Uh, somebody just walking in and writing us a check of 2.5 million, 3 million, 5 million, and we go buy a church. I daydream of this. But I think it is important. Uh, I'm going to read uh, some scriptures here. I'm not even going to say about it. And it's from the book of Haggai, chapter number one. Haggai, chapter number one, Sister Lorraine, if you can bring that. And I'm going to read it in your listening. And hear this story because this story is, is so profound. Haggai, chapter number one. And this is what the Bible says. In the second year, uh, second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet, uh, the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of Shittiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Zo Josadah, the high priest. Verse number two, this is what the, uh, the Lord Almighty says. The Lord Almighty says, these people say the time has not come yet uh, to rebuild the Lord's house. Uh, verse number three, then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai, and, 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 and this is what he said. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while well, this house, the house of the Lord, that is, remains a ruin? Now, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. And, and you know, as we go on in this story, there's that verse, that, that there's that statement there that the Lord keeps on referring to uh, the children of Israel. He says, give careful thought to your ways. Amen. You have pl planted much, but harvest, harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Number verse number seven. This is what the Lord, Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Verse number eight, go up into the mountains and bring me and bring down timber and build my house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. You brought home, I blew it away. Why? Declares the Lord Almighty. Because of my house, which remains a ruin, while each of you is busy with your own house. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withdrawn their dew and the earth its crops. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain, the new wine, the olive oil, and everything else the ground produces, on people and livestock and all the labor of your hands. 12. Then Zerubbabel, son of Sheetel, Joshua, son of Zodadak, Josadak, the high priest, and the whole remnant of the people obeyed the voice of, the, of their Lord, their God, and the message of the prophet Haggai, because the Lord their God had sent him, and the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message of the Lord to the people. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Sheetel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Zo Josadak, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people, they came and began to work on the house of the Lord Almighty, their God. Praise the Lord. Now that story is self-explanatory. And, and, and as it goes, you know, I don't want to just repeat myself because you heard what happens uh, to the people. You know, they just came out of captivity. And I think there was really so much in hardship while they were in Babylon. And when they came, everybody was routing for themselves. And I, and I can understand, man, let me tell you, I can, I can empathize with them. I can, I mean, I can identify with them. If I came from a place of torture, a place of torment, and uh, I've been without food, I've been without, you know, money, I'd, first of all, maybe my mind maybe would go default to going and working so that I can maybe, uh, maybe buy a seat for my, <laughs> for my kids, maybe buy a bed for them. And, and I don't think those things are bad, but I think what happened to, this, to these people is that they continued to, they went overboard, you know, in beautifying their homes and they forgot about the house, the house of the Lord. 
and, and at this point, I know some of you can ask yourselves, uh, aren't, we, aren't we in a church whereby we worship God? Yes, we are in a church where we worship God. But you know what? That is a, it, the, the building in which we are, and I'm going to explain this in a, in a little bit. I hope you bear with me, please, uh, so I can finish this. Is that the building we are in is a rental building. Somebody can wake up in the morning and say, you know what? I'm serving you notice. That's exactly what we, it was done to us a few years ago. And I know the Lord has used, you know, uh, the, the place where we are to, uh, you know, to be so gracious to us. I, I'm sure we are not ever going to be kicked out and, and we fail to find a place to assemble. But I think as a congregation, I think we have a, a responsibility because we are, we are uh, young, young families that have children that are growing up. You know, the other day, you know, on the Christmas, uh, Christmas service, you saw kids that were so, so young the other day. Now they are the ones reading scriptures and leading service, you know, for us. And these kids will need a place that is called a home. And since we've started this project, I think it is very, very important for us to move on uh, in, in completing it. We may not really, you know, be able to complete the project this year, or, but we can, we can look forward maybe in the next maybe few years. If we can be consistent in our commitment towards the house of the Lord, I think the Lord is going to bless us abundantly. Amen. And just as the Lord uh, stirred up the hearts of, uh, uh, you know, uh, we find he, he stirred up, you know, uh, Zerubbabel, you know, and Shetel, the governor of Judah, and, uh, and, and, the, and the people, the remnant of the people that came from Babylon, he can also stir us up to see the, 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 the need of us in the future having a building where our children can come without being obstructed, you know, and without even being threatened, you know, to, that they can be chased out from that house. Praise the Lord. I also read uh, from Exodus 36, um, Exodus 36, uh, uh, verse number one to seven. Please bear with me. And I hope uh, you're, getting, um, you're getting blessed as, as we move on. Uh, Exodus chapter number 36, verse number one to seven. So uh, Bezareel, Oholiab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing the sanctuary are to do the work just as the Lord had commanded. Then Moses summoned Bezareel and Ogiliab and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability and whom and who was willing. Remember, this is, uh, I love this. It is who was willing. The Lord, the Lord never forces you to do any work for him. And even as Moses here, he says in verse number two, he summoned all the constructs, the masons, the people who are professionals, the people like George now, he's in real estate, you know, called upon them. And uh, he, he told them, you know, he called them and, ex and exactly told them, you know, what they were supposed to do in verse number two. Uh, and, and the people that God had given ability to whom was willing to come and do the work. Okay, verse number three, they received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. And the people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. Think about this. When they were told of the vision of building the sanctuary, they started giving. And, and these are people, mind you, who are on, on, on a pilgrimage. They were still on their journey, but they continued to bring their free will offerings morning after morning. So all the skilled workers who are doing all the work on the sanctuary left what they were doing uh, and uh, said to Moses, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work of the Lord commanded to be done. Verse number six, then Moses gave an order and they sent this word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so, so the people were restrained from bringing more. I mean, the reason why I read this is to show you the willingness that the, that the children of Israel had. You know, it is not that they were rich, but the willingness to give to us the construction of the sanctuary was, was so overwhelming that they brought and brought and brought material and brought the finances that were needed. Until, you know, this builder said, no, we don't need it now anymore. We have already enough to construct this, the sanctuary. And I hope that God is going to stir us our hearts so that even when you're giving or whatever, it's the $25 that we, we decided that we're going to give weekly. And, and by the way, 
well, I'm on that. There are some who may not really be able to afford maybe $25, it might be too much. There are some maybe who $25 might be, you know, I can give more. You know, whatever the Lord places in your heart to give, just give it and the Lord, give it willingly. And the Lord is going, is going to bless you just as he did, you know, to these people. To, they gave it so much uh, to a point whereby, uh, you know, I mean, the offerings were too much and they, they were told to stop. Praise be to God. I was reading from uh, uh, chapter uh, chapter four and five from the, the, the book of First King. You know, uh, you know, this is where the Solomon was constructing the, the, the temple. Okay. And uh, when I was reading that, I, there's some things that I, I saw that, that really mesmerized me. You know, Solomon, you know, went out because they didn't have any timber in Israel. And so every time you make an intentional decision to do something and and this applies to even your projects the lord is going to line up a divine connector are you listening to me and my prayer is and 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 we declared this in the new new year's eve and and i was actually declaring this to my family you know my extended families in kenya that we need whenever set a date if you have a project you want to do even as a, as a person do not procrastinate amen do not procrastinate. If you want to go to school, set a date. Set a date to meet with somebody. Now, this is what happens. The moment you set a date towards that direction, if you are in the market to buy a house, set a date. You know, begin now looking for, go to the MLS, begin to look for a house and a place where you want to go. So begin the process. The moment we begin the process, the Lord sends out a divine connection to fulfill that project. Are you listening to me? But the moment we, if that project is still gonna be on book and in your mind, and it has never been put on paper, let me tell you, that project is still gonna remain, you know, still in the conceived state in your mind, unless it is actuated. Are you listening to what I'm trying to say? So the, I found out like in the book of first, in the, in the book of first Kings chapter number four and five, that when Solomon realized that he was given the responsibility of building the temple, remember, David really was the one, his dad was the one who was actually supposed to construct the temple. But God said, no, 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 no. You have so much blood in your hands and, and I, you are old. You know, I, I, you know, I think God figured out David was already old. So much blood has been shed, you know, through his, you know, reign and, you know, kids, kids misbehaving, but he said, I am going to use one of your sons to build me my house. And so when Solomon recognized that it was incumbent about, up, upon him to build the house, you know, and he made, he made a proclamation that I'm going to build the house. <laughs> you know, God prepared, you know, uh, the king of Helam in Tyre. Now in Tyre, they had beautiful, the most beautiful cedar that was needed to construct the, 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 the temple that Solomon wanted to, to, to build. And let me tell you, so they were in famine. If you read the Bible, they were in famine. And so Tyre said, well, as long as you can provide food for us, I will provide all the cedar that you need. And so the Bible says that, that, that uh, King Solomon, month after month, he continued sending uh, uh, food you know, to the king of Tyre. And the king, the king of Helam, I mean, King Helam of Tyre said, I am going to float all the all the all the cedar that you need, and, it, and and actually they were floating those the timber by by the river, and he was felling them. You know, if you read that, I was so shocked, Joe, that King Solomon had one hundred and eighty men that were de 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 delegated to 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 build the temple. One hundred eighty thousand. Think about that, and he had three thousand. 300 supervisors that were overseeing the work of the rebuilding. Yeah, there it is. You see, you know, and, 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 and in the, he had given, there were 180 Israelite, Israelites that were dedicate, dedicated to rebuild the temple and 3,300 supervisors that oversee the work of the, the rebuilding of the temple. So you can see it, there was a, it was a serious business, rebuilding the house for the Lord was a serious business. And these people took it upon themselves uh, to do this. Now, this is a plan that, that, that every one of you that, 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 are, that we have in 2021. 
Most of you never know that we began in a hotel. That's when we, we held our first service. And after, you know, after some time, we moved um, uh, to a strip mall, actually next to the, to the building where we go to church. It is actually in the Jocelyn, and I know most of you were there. If you, if you didn't know where we were worshiping and you maybe have come when we are in the church, if you ask, we can show you, you know, the place where we, we used to go. So rent became so high and um, goodness, I, it's just by the grace of God that we're able to even meet the obligations there. And so we were served a notice to get out, okay? And so we, you know, most of you know the story. We, we were able to move out and God, of course, you know, arranged a divine uh, connection in, in the Royal Heaven Baptist Church in the building where we, we, we are. And, uh, and, uh, um, and, and so that's a rental building for some of you who may not really know. And so we, we, we started while we were in Josie, we decided that we are gonna build up, we are gonna build a church. And so we started raising money. Now, it is important for me to let you know that the majority of the monies that were raised in Josie were given through small contributions. You know, consistent contributions, people just deciding that we are gonna give $25 every week Every family gives $25 and people were willing and they were giving it. And so the bulk of that money, even though we had, I think, you know, several fundraisers, Sister Liz, you know, Gideon, who is the chairman of our, uh, of our, of our building committee, know this. Well, most of those monies that we have today, the $89 and even the $9, because I think by the beginning of 2020, we had, I think, $80,000. The 9,000 that has been given, is, for, is from people who still have been faithful, giving the $25 every month and now see now we are at 9,000 for, for 2020. And so, um, you know, the, the reason why I'm telling you it's important just to make a step of faith and do this. Some of you might be wondering, okay, pastor, this is so hard. I'm, I'm not even able to pay our bills. But let me tell you, the moment you make a step of faith, God is going to bring the provision, amen? And, and most of you know that I'm not, um, I, you know, I'm, I don't believe in, um, I believe in, in, in allowing the word of God to settle in your hearts and you giving a free will uh, gift because I believe that is what God blesses. Praise the Lord. So what are we asking you? We have a building committee and actually we have already revived the building committee um, uh, that, that is led by our brother Gideon. And uh, Joel is uh, vice chairman of that committee. We've already uh, uh, met the first meeting. We already, as Joe announced, that we have $89,000. The plan that we have is to look for land that we can buy so that that money is not just sitting in the bank, you know? Um, and so if we buy land, maybe a, a, a good piece of land somewhere, uh, that by the time we want to buy, buy ourselves maybe a building, there'll be appreciation in the piece of land that we buy. So right now, the building committee is tasked with that responsibility. And our next meeting is, is uh, I think somewhere this month, and we are gonna come together, we are thinking where we can buy that piece of land. And right now we have in the bank again, as I told you, 89,000. But this money has been benefiting the bank since the money is not enough uh, to put as a down payment to buy a building that we want. And so my plea for us is, if each and every family, you go to God and ask the Lord, Lord, please help me to, uh, uh, I wanna participate in this, you know, in the sense of what I had today, that I wanna be giving and commit to about $25. If that, is, if that is too much, just put a figure where you are able to, uh, to give to the Lord. You know, I realize, you know, sometimes I, I take my children maybe to a McDonald's or Chick-fil-A, that's their favorite. And, and I know maybe it's a favorite of most families. And man, just one week, you might actually blow $40 buying, you know, a meal for your children. You can say, you know what, I'm going to sacrifice one of those days when you take them. And so that you're giving that money towards the building, believe it or not. I was calculating and uh, if, if you, if, if just 20, 20 families, and I know uh, 20 people, you know, 20 families, I would say, give just uh, $25 every, every week, you know, faithfully, that'll be $500. And you multiply that by in the number of weeks in a year, that is $26,000, amen? Now, if we, we combine that, if we've been doing this over and over again, you know, you be you realize that we can be able to do much with the little. God is able to stretch the little that we may have so that he can be glorified. Praise be to God, amen? 
So that's what I'm asking you. Uh, if you can commit uh, to giving $25, um, you know, per family, if you want to give more, that will be a blessing. And um, uh, and the Lord is gonna, going to provide. And the Lord is going to bless you because of, you know, giving to his work. Amen. And so um, if you... If if we can all agree to do that and do it consistently, the Lord is going to bless you. Praise be to God. Praise the Lord. So I would also request uh, uh, the building committee uh, uh, to be notifying us maybe every weekly. I remember there was a time where we had a class showing us, you know, how much money we've raised and how much money we have given. If you can be notifying us how much money we've raised, you can decide whether it's weekly or monthly so that we can see our progress. So we'll also be announcing about the building project every week to you uh, so that uh, just to remind you and so that you, you may not forget. Amen. And uh, as you do that, the Lord is going to bless you. Now, I feel like maybe somebody has a question and asking, but pastor, how are you going to do this? And we are not many to do this. And I'll refer you to the scripture in the book of First Samuel, chapter number 14, verse number six. This is the story of Jonathan. And, um, and his servant. And this is what scripture says, 1 Samuel, verse number 14 and 6. And this also applies to your life. Sometimes we look down on ourselves and we think we cannot even make it. But you know what? This is what Jonathan said. And Jonathan said to the young man who bore his armor, come and let us go over unto the garrison of these uncircumcised people. These were the Philistines. It may be that the Lord will work for us for there is no resistant, I mean, there's no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. Praise the Lord. You remember this story? It's a very powerful story. Now, this is exactly what happened. There was uh, the Philistines and uh, <clears throat> they were all rolling for battle and there were, there were quite many of them, you know. And so the camp of the Israelites was so scared, led by, you know, uh, Jonathan's dad, Saul. And so Saul was actually shaking and worried. What are we going to do? We are going to be beaten. We are going to be defeated. Look at the, 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 the amount of the Philistines. There are so many people. They are going to just come and trump us on. Amen. But I love the spirit of Jonathan. Jonathan told his, his uh, he realized the condition of the children of Israel. And he said, you know what? I don't believe it. And this is, this is so important to have people who do not, you know, you know think in terms of how the world looks at things. So Jonathan put his trust and faith in God. And, and this is, these are the words that, you know, the words that we just read, you know, he spoke to his uh, servant, uh, his, his uh, armor bearer. And, and, and I love the, those words that he says, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. We might look ourselves, I like what Gideon says, that we might be small, but this is our mega church. Amen. God can accomplish much even with the little. When he takes whatever you have, he can stretch it, praise the Lord. And maybe he can see our faith in what we have done. And who knows the next connection that God is going to give us. I am believing God for 2021. The Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter, number, uh, chapter 1, verse number 37, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. So I, 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 I'm, I'm just telling all of us, church, uh, to uh, rise up to the occasion. Go to God. I, want, I don't want to ask you to give because if I ask you, you will say that Pastor Tony asked you to do it. Go to God. Ask him in regard, in reference to what we shared here this, this morning. Is it right for our family to commit to this project? If you feel the Lord says yes and, and listen to him, then begin doing it. And the Lord is going to bless you. Amen. Now, since our time is so much gone, I'm, I'm not going to continue, but we shall continue um, into the other two things next week. And so that you, you can hear the other two things. But remember, I already told you, it is CBMO. In fact, I gave it a, a, a synonym, CBMO. It is cultivating a relationship with God. It is building. We want to focus on building the house of the Lord. And then the third thing is the ministry to the widows and orphans, which I'm going to talk about next week. And then outreach to the world with the gospel and the love of God. And these things we can do because God is on our side. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We want to adore you. We want to give you praise and honor. Thank you so much for coming through for us. 
through this service. Thank you so much because of these words that are so powerful that you put in our spirits today. And I thank you, Heavenly Father. And even though we've taken uh, quite a bit of time, Father, even to explain them, but Father, I pray that it will be a blessing to the hearers who hear them again. Lord, at this point, we just want to commit the entire year, oh Lord, even unto you. And I pray that even in our personal projects, that Lord, we shall not procrastinate. You've reminded us, Lord, that once we take a step, the Lord is going to, going to provide in the name of Jesus. There are so many, many instances that I don't even have time to talk about when men and women of God make, made a step of faith that the Lord, you brought in a divine connector. In, in the projects that we have as a family, what we have said we are going to do, it could be maybe buying a piece of property. It could be maybe buying a new home. It could be maybe savings. It could be maybe uh, whatever it is that we decide as a family that we are going to do. I pray that those that we are going to start. And the moment we start, Lord, you're going to teach us and teach us and, and, and show us how to go. You're going to make the provision. And even as a church, all these plans that we are making, Lord, we have started. And we know that you're sending a divine connection. Father, I speak a blessing over your people. We declare, I declare and decree that none of them will suffer lack in 2021. I declare and decree that none of them, Lord, will, 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 will be sick or have any kind of a disease in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree that their, their places of work will give them promotion. Those that are in business, Father, will, 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 will expand their businesses in the name of Jesus. I, I declare and decree that our relationship with God will even grow exponentially in the name of Jesus Christ to the glory and honor of your name. We want to hear you, oh God. We want to hear what you are telling us to the glory and honor of your name. If you're listening in the social media and you've never given your life to Jesus, this is a great opportunity. The Bible says that he knocks on the door of your heart if you do not harden, the, you do not harden your heart, and if you can allow him in, he will come and dwell in your heart. And this is a very great opportunity that you can say, Lord, I won't begin the year with you. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans 10.10 10, that it is with your heart that you believe that he is the son of God, that he lived on this world, and um, he died on the cross, and on the third day he resurrected. And it is with your mouth that you confess that he is Lord, and at that point you'll be saved. Well, if you want to make that kind of a decision, I can pray with you right now. You can repeat these words after me. Say, Father, I come into your presence. I'm thanking you because I've heard your word. I know that the plan that you have for me is great. It is a wonderful plan. And therefore, I open up the doors of my heart. May you come in. May you redeem me. May you save me. Wash all my sins with the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. I accept you as Lord and Savior, and I will tell others of what you have done. I confess you, I confess it with my mouth that you are the Lord, and I'm thanking you in Jesus' name. If you have just said that prayer, you can, and, and you might be in another city, look for a, a church that believes in the word of God. Go there, see the pastor. Seek him and uh, tell him that you gave your life to Jesus and he is going to take it from there. May God bless you. Read the word of God. May you pray and call upon the name of the Lord and he will never desert you in Jesus' name. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor, for such a wonderful message.